are several uh, treatment options. Um, you can uh, use oral medication, including anticholinergics. Um, one should also consider dopa um, responsive dystonia as a diagnosis, a treatable diagnosis, and uh, consider a trial of uh, dopamine or levodopa. Um, there are uh, botulinum toxin injections for, co for focal dystonias, and then there's uh, surgical options, including deep brain stimulation, where we also see an advancement in the field with new um, surgical um, methods or methods of stimulation itself. Um, there is, um, it's very interesting to see that there's an increasing list of treatable causes that the clinician should keep in mind, uh, particularly with some of the genetic forms of dystonia, of the, um, some, where the enzymes have been disentangled. And it's a very exciting time, I feel, because we're moving into the field of precision medicine now, um, where we're trying to identify a specific cause um, that can be targeted with treatment. Um, we are seeing similar developments also in the field of Parkinson's disease, where, we, um, um, where a growing list of trials is starting now for patients with a molecularly confirmed diagnosis of PD, in particular for LARC2 and um, GBA. And GBA um, and LARC2 are, of course, uh, some of the common causes of PD. Um, GBA is a lysosomal storage disorder, and in fact, we have in recent years um, been fascinated by this concept, how a heterozygous mutation in a, a gene that is associated with um, a lysosomal storage disorder is associated with an increased risk of late onset neurodegeneration. And so we've been wondering as to how far this um, not only applies to GBA, but also to other um, lysosom lysosomal storage disorder genes. And in our group, we've been studying uh, Neiman pig type C as an example, uh, studying a cohort of patients, but also the heterozygous carriers, um, and found that they do have changes um, that are similar to the premotor stage of Parkinson's disease. Um, so we wonder whether they may develop neurodegeneration a few years um, down the line. So they had abnormal cognition, um, suggestion of REM sleep behavior disorder, um, abnormal smell, abnormal mood, um, subtle motor signs in some of them, and um, changes in the PET imaging. And all this was published in neurology earlier this year. So um, we, we're quite excited up about that, about this hypothesis, and I'm sure we will uh, pursue this uh, further. Um, we've also been uh, doing some functional work recently into, um, into this, and um, together with my colleagues, Dr. Um, Sabina Tahirovich and Alessio Colombo from the German Center of Neurodegenerative Disease in Munich. Um, we have characterized microglial uh, proteomic signatures in um, animal models, so in mice with Neiman pick type C mutations and patient derived macrophages, and found impaired lipid trafficking. And to translate this uh, to human disease, we then generated novel ex vivo assays uh, using patient macrophages and they displayed similar proteomic disease signatures. So I, I find this is um, super exciting actually and um, I'm, I'm very interested to see um, how this field will evolve with regards to the lysosomal storage disorders.